What elements influence how we decide which risks deserve the most attention? What is the purpose of a honeypot? Question number one. In the context of securely erasing data from a hard drive before throwing it away, what does overwriting refer to? Option A, physically destroying the storage device. Option B, replacing the stored data with random characters or patterns to make the original data unrecoverable. Option C, storing the data in a different location for redundancy. Option D, encrypting the existing data without removing it. The correct answer is Option B, replacing the stored data with random characters or patterns to make the original data unrecoverable. Overwriting in the context of securely erasing data from a hard drive refers to the process of replacing existing data with new data, typically random characters or patterns, in order to make the original data irretrievable. This is a common method used for data sanitization or data destruction. Question number two. What is the purpose of a honeypot system? Option A, a type of encryption. Option B, a network decoy used to attract and detect attackers. Option C, a type of intrusion detection system. Option D, a type of firewall. The correct answer is Option B, a network decoy used to attract and detect attackers. Honeypots are intentionally deployed within a network to mimic valuable systems or services, enticing attackers to interact with them. By doing so, security professionals can observe and analyze the attacker's behavior, tactics, and tools, thus enhancing overall network security. The purpose of a honeypot system is best described as a network decoy used to attract and detect attackers, making it the correct option from the list provided. So, this option accurately describes the primary purpose of a honeypot system. Question number three. What elements influence how we decide which risks deserve the most attention? Option A, probability of the risk. Option B, impact of the risk. Option C, cost of mitigation. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is. Option D, all of the above. Impact of the risk, probability of the risk, and cost of mitigation influence how we decide which risks deserve the most attention. Probability of the risk, this relates to the likelihood or chance that the risk will occur. Risks with a high probability of occurrence may require more attention because they are more likely to materialize and cause harm. Conversely, risks with a low probability may still be important, but may not warrant immediate action compared to higher probability risks. Impact of the risk, this refers to the potential consequences or severity of the risk if it were to occur. Risks with high impact, such as those that could cause significant financial loss, harm to individuals, damage to reputation, or disruption of critical operations, often deserve more attention because their consequences can be severe. Cost of mitigation, this involves the expenses associated with implementing measures to reduce or manage the risk. Factors such as the cost of implementing security controls, purchasing insurance, conducting risk assessments, and hiring experts all contribute to the overall cost of mitigating a risk. Balancing the cost of mitigation against the potential impact and probability of the risk is essential in determining whether it deserves the most attention. By considering all of these elements together, organizations can make informed decisions about which risks to prioritize and allocate resources effectively to manage them. Therefore, the correct option is all of the above. Question number four. What document details an organization's strategy for ensuring critical operations continue after a disruption? Option A, risk management plan. Option B, disaster recovery plan. Option C, business continuity plan. Option D, incident response plan. The correct answer is. Option C, business continuity plan. While all of these documents play crucial roles in organizational resilience and security, the business continuity plan specifically focuses on the strategy for ensuring critical operations continue after a disruption, making it the correct option from the list provided. A business continuity plan serves as the overarching strategy for ensuring an organization's ability to function during and after disruptions. 
It considers various potential threats, outlines steps to maintain critical operations, and includes procedures for resuming normal functions after the disruption has passed. A BCP incorporates elements from risk management, disaster recovery, and incident response to provide a comprehensive framework for organizational resilience. Question number 5. Which of the following is not a recommended approach for handling security incidents? Option A. Communicate with stakeholders throughout the incident response process. Option B. Learn from the incident and improve security posture. Option C. Document all actions taken during the incident response process. Option D. Assign blame for the incident to individual team members. The correct answer is Option D. Assign blame for the incident to individual team members. Blame assignment can have detrimental effects on incident response effectiveness and organizational culture, making it the correct option from the list provided. Team members might become defensive or reluctant to share information if they fear being blamed. Focusing on blame can divert attention away from containing the incident and restoring normal operations. If a culture of blame persists, people might hesitate to report future incidents for fear of repercussions. Question number 6. What cybersecurity concern does certification terminal mitigate by implementing load balancing and scalable infrastructure to handle peak sales traffic? Option A. Confidentiality. Option B. Authentication. Option C. Integrity. Option D. Availability. The correct answer is Option D. Availability. Certification Terminal is implementing load balancing and scalable infrastructure to handle peak traffic. In cybersecurity, availability refers to the accessibility and usability of data and resources for authorized users whenever they need it. By implementing load balancing and scalable infrastructure, Certification Terminal is ensuring that their website remains available even during times of high traffic, such as peak periods. Load balancing distributes incoming traffic across multiple servers, preventing any single server from becoming overwhelmed and causing downtime. Additionally, scalable infrastructure allows the system to adapt to changing demands by adding or removing resources as needed, further ensuring continuous availability. Confidentiality, integrity, and authentication are important cybersecurity concerns, but they are not directly mitigated by the implementation of load balancing and scalable infrastructure for handling peak traffic. Question number 7. What is created or established when specific permissions are assigned to individual users within a Unix file system? Option A. Mandatory access control. Option B. An access control list. Option C. An access control entry. Option D. Role-based access control. The correct answer is Option C. An access control entry. An access control entry is a fundamental component of access control mechanisms in operating systems. It represents a rule or set of rules that dictate the access permissions for a particular user or group to a specific resource, such as a file or directory. In Unix file systems, permissions are assigned to individual users, groups, and sometimes others. Each ACL contains multiple access control entries, where each access control entry specifies the permissions for a specific user or group. Therefore, assigning permissions to individual users establishes an access control list that governs access to the file system resource. Question number 8. What aspect of physical security serves as both a deterrent and a detective measure, prompting potential intruders to reassess their intentions? Option A. CCTV cameras. Option B. Man traps. Option C. Fences. Option D. Locks. The correct answer is. Option A. CCTV cameras. Cameras are highly visible and serve as a strong deterrent to potential intruders. The knowledge of being recorded discourages many from attempting a crime. CCTV footage can provide valuable evidence after a security breach. Recordings can help identify the perpetrator, their methods, and potentially even their accomplices. Therefore, CCTV cameras offer a unique combination of deterrence and detective capabilities, making them a valuable aspect of physical security. 
Question number 9. In a logical access control system, what model utilizes characteristics of the user, resource, and surrounding conditions to determine access permissions? Option A, Mandatory Access Control, MAC. Option B, Attribute-Based Access Control, a BAC. Option C, Role-Based Access Control, are BAC. Option D, Access Control List, ACL. The correct answer is. Option B, Attribute-Based Access Control, a BAC. Attribute-Based Access Control is a logical access control model that utilizes the characteristics of the user, resource, and surrounding conditions to determine access permissions. Attribute-Based Access Control evaluates various attributes associated with the user, such as role, department, clearance level, location, and other relevant factors. These attributes define the user's identity and context within the system. Attribute-Based Access Control considers attributes related to the resource or object being accessed, such as sensitivity level, classification, type, owner, and other metadata. These attributes provide information about the resource's properties and access requirements. Attribute-Based Access Control takes into account contextual factors or environmental attributes that may impact access decisions, such as time of access, location, network parameters, device characteristics, and other situational factors. By analyzing the attributes of the user, resource, and environment in real-time, attribute-based access control dynamically evaluates access requests and determines whether to grant or deny access based on the configured policies and rules. This flexible approach allows organizations to define complex access control policies tailored to their specific requirements and adapt to changing security needs. If these questions add value to your preparation, please hit the like button and support us. Question number 10. What actions should be taken to ensure the security of your computer from malware threats like viruses, worms, and trojans? Option A, by avoiding suspicious email attachments and downloads. Option B, by installing antivirus software. Option C, by keeping your operating system and software up to date. Option D, all options. The correct answer is. Option D, all options. Each of the actions listed contributes significantly to enhancing the security of your computer against malware threats like viruses, worms, and trojans. Antivirus software plays a crucial role in detecting, quarantining, and removing various types of malware from your computer. It provides real-time protection by scanning files, programs, and incoming data for malicious content. Software vulnerabilities are often exploited by malware, to gain unauthorized access to systems or execute malicious actions. Operating system vendors and software developers regularly release updates and patches to address these vulnerabilities and improve security. By keeping your operating system, applications, and utilities up to date with the latest patches and security fixes, you reduce the risk of malware exploiting known vulnerabilities to compromise your computer. Malware often spreads through email attachments, malicious links, and downloads from untrusted sources. Cyber criminals use social engineering techniques to trick users into opening infected email attachments or downloading malicious files. Therefore, the correct option is all options. Thanks for watching. We'll meet you in the next video.